What's going on guys, 24-7 Tech here, and in this video, we're going to be talking about Intel's new 11th generation processors, Dell's new XPS 13 and 13 2-in-1, and how they're both going to go hand in hand, because those processors are going to be in them. Intel needs something good with these 11th gen processors, because the past few months have been kind of bad for them with the announcements of Apple Silicon, AMD making better moves, you know, stock price isn't looking too good, it's dropped $10 in one day and it pretty much hasn't recovered from that. So these 11 gen processors need to be good for Intel. That was usually one of the first companies to adopt the new 11 generation or 10 generation chips whenever they first come out. And they're doing the same thing this year. Stay tuned for an awesome video in which I cover, you know, what we should expect from the new XPS 13 and XPS 13 2 and one the new 11 gen pro processors, and even more. Subscribe down below for more awesome videos like this one. But for now, let's get on with the video. So the new 11th generation processors have new integrated graphics with them and Intel calls them the XE graphics. So those are supposed to step up graphics quality by a lot and the performance is supposed to be much, much better than the 10th generation ones. I mean, they did have the new Iris Plus G7 and G5 graphics of last year, which was a pretty good increase, to be honest. They're trying to kind of excel in the GPU game and the X3 is supposed to be the next step in that way. Um, the CPU and, you know, daily office tasks, according to Intel, are supposed to be around 20% better than last year's 10th generation processors. And, you know, that's that's great. Incremental upgrades, 20%. Last year, I think we saw 15% or something. S sure, that's awesome. But it's never gonna, you know, you're not gonna get to AMD level or ARM level or Apple Silicon level with 20% upgrades. You know, we need something big from Intel. And this year's CPU upgrades are are just not that. However, battery life is now improved. Intel says you should be getting an hour more than the 10th generation processors, which, you know, we'll see when the laptops come to hand, you know, Dell, HP, Lenovo, all of that stuff. We'll see how the battery life gets improved. They say an hour is supposed to be improved, which is a decent upgrade, as I just said, but nothing monumental. There's also not support for 8K HDR, um, you know, to dock it to your monitor with the new 11th gen processors. I mean, this is a cool feature for sure, since 8K monitors, I mean, are there are a few of them coming out, not 8K, but 6K, sometimes 5K, you know, all that sort of stuff. It's good to have, but not many people have 8K right now, so it's not a huge headlining feature in my opinion. So what's new with the XPS 13? So this is the one, not this is the normal clamshell model, not the two-in-one. And just to recap, in 2020, in January, we saw a huge update to it. We saw a new design, new keyboard, bigger trackpad, better processors, you know, a whole new redesign. And I actually bought one as well, and it's an amazing computer. I love using it, and it's so much better than the 2019 one. Well, for 2020, we should be seeing kind of incremental upgrades, nothing too big. We should be seeing these new 11 gen processors, of course, in the i5, i7, and i3 models. I hope they just don't have that i3 model anymore. Start off with the i5, go to the i7. I3 isn't just good, it's a dual core processor and for 2020 and for years beyond, dual core processors are just not good. We should see what we saw in the past two years, just an incremental upgrade in performance. You should see around a 15 to 20% increase in Geekbench scores in uh, single core and multi-core, which again is incremental, but it's not gonna get to AMD levels as I keep saying in this video. But the GPU should be much better with the new XE graphics. The Iris Plus G7 performed really well in the 2020 XPS 13, so we should be seeing an even better boost with these new XE graphics. The actual design of the XPS 13 should not be much different than the one we have right now. We have a 16 by 10 amazing display on the XPS 13 right now. We have a 4K option if you do want that as well. The CPU and GPU, as I said, will be increased, but the design itself, I don't see many big upgrades coming. There could be a minor, you know, fingerprint change or a different style, a minor tweak to the keyboard or maybe a little bigger trackpad. There are a few things that I'd want to see, but the design is pretty good right now. Um, the 16 by 10 display is a pretty good aspect ratio. 3 by 2 would be amazing if they could do that. But I really doubt if they would do that for the 2021 model, especially considering they just refreshed this literally 9 to 10 months ago. So you don't expect anything huge in the design. It's mainly internal upgrades that you should see. As I said previously in this video, guys, please, please subscribe down below. Every subscriber makes a huge difference. I need all the help that I can get from you guys. And please support me by subscribing. You can also go check out my Twitter and Instagram. I create behind the scenes content on there. I post tech updates, tech, you know, opinions that I have. And it's a great way to follow up with me. Go follow it over there. You can also read my articles at the link medium.com slash at 247tech. I write articles about the latest technologies just like these upcoming XPS 13s. So what about these XPS 13 2-in-1? So this one is usually a 
couple hundred dollars more expensive than the normal XPS 13 because it has to have a standard touchscreen and it also has to have that two-in-one design so it has to be a different hinge that sort of stuff um we should be seeing a, a slight design change here the bottom bezel should be trimmed a little bit um on the normal XPS 13 the bottom bezel is a bit smaller than the XPS 13 two-in-one I hope they bring it to the two-in-one this time and I think we should be seeing that it's not a huge thing but it's just so small things which make a big difference. The rest of the processing should be close to the XPS 13, the standard one. I mean, keep in mind, these two models are pretty much hand in hand. The only difference with the two in one and the normal one is that this one has that convertible hinge and it has a standard touchscreen. But the CPU and GPU upgrades should be fairly similar throughout both machines. I'm really excited to see the GPU on this machine since it's going to be quite a, you know, a big upgrade. This one was last uh, updated in August of 2019. So it's been over a year since it's been updated and quite a bit has happened in the processor and graphics department for Intel as well. And I want to see these new GPUs in the two in one models. So let's talk about Intel's future. Companies have detected Intel kind of on a downward trend. So from 2012 to 2017, Intel was kind of a monopoly on CPUs. People converted to Intel five or six years ago, like Apple in 2006, I believe. And in 2012 to 2017, there wasn't really much difference. I mean, in that span of five years, we probably saw a 15 to 20% increase in actual performance. It was really bad. And AMD took advantage of that in those five years and they made like massive leaps. And now they arguably have better processors than Intel. And I think that's kind of true. If they put the right architecture and they kind of, the a laptop adapts to that AMD, it's, it's much better than the Intel processors. Intel needs to do something big. The 11th gen processors aren't looking to be that amazing update. And the CPU is what they probably need to focus on because the graphics department looks fine. You know, it looks intact, but the CPU, AMD is miles ahead. And we can't also talk about Apple Silicon or ARM in general. ARM type processors, we saw it in the Surface Pro X last year. And Apple Silicon is supposed to come in literally a few months to the MacBook Pro and a new 12 inch MacBook apparently as well. And ARM looks to be a threat to both AMD and Intel, but the future looks to be ditch Intel, go towards AMD or ARM, pick either one or maybe have a blend of two in your whole product line. Microsoft is a great example of this. They have the Surface Laptop 15 inch, which has AMD processors, but the Surface Pro X has normal ARM processors. And then the Surface Laptop 3, Book 3, Pro 7, they all have Intel processors. So the transition for all companies is probably gonna happen in the next five years. Dell looks to be kind of aligned with my, uh, my like, uh, sorry, Intel. They seem to have like an alliance with them pretty much, but uh, it's probably time for Dell to adapt to AMD or ARM type processors because Intel isn't making huge gains. All right, guys, so here are some of my final thoughts about these new processors and, and you know, the XPS 13 and everything in general. The 11 gen processors look to be pretty good and uh, kind of more better in the GPU department, but the CPU is something that kind of alarms me. I feel like Intel has got to do something to, you know, show its worth. Apple Silicon is literally going to drive Intel down for sure. It's probably double the performance of what Intel processors are getting right now. AMD has already proven itself to be much better in a more cost effective approach for other things like PC building or that type of stuff. Um, Intel's got to do something to, you know, make its presence in the CPU game again. I mean, they were Monopoly back then, not anymore. There's competition now. Um, the XPS 13s, uh, I think they're amazing laptops. They already have a great design, amazing displays, good options, good upgrades, all of that type of stuff. These new processors and graphics are just going to make them even better, which is always a great thing to have. But Dell needs to keep aware that Intel might not be the best option for them in a few years and even right now, maybe. So yeah, that's the video guys. Those are my thoughts about it. The new XPS 13s, 11 gen processors, and everything in general. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe down below. I need all the help that I can get from you guys. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. See ya.